What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, September 5th, 2023. God. It is September, ladies and gentlemen. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the OK Beast, a.k.a. the Future Class of Gaming. Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. Is this a new shirt? No, you've seen this one before. Okay. But I'm, Are you wearing I'm rocking so many great shirts every like, time. This, I think I might have more openness. I was going to say, mean, I like having the top two buttons undone. I yeah. like having the sleeves rolled up. You're rocking I'm in a very fashionable way. I'm always rolling the sleeves. Way. As a very tall, bulbous man, mm -hmm. most shirts, my body shape, they don't. This, I get cut off on cuffs, mm -hmm. so I usually roll most. I can, I'm not knocking You get shirt. away with it, though. I'm not. I, I get away with it. Yeah. And what I like about this shirt is that it is a wrinkle-free material. Oh. Because I still haven't bought more hangers for the collar shirts, mm -hmm. so they get folded on a shelf, mm -hmm. which then they I got wrinkles. And then you see me steaming them when I get here. I mean, I look like yeah. I'm a I'm a dad getting ready for a wedding. <laughs> I'm like in my undershirt, just steaming a shirt in the closet. Okay. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, all right. What's why just all right? I don't know. There's nothing, nothing special going on today. This is a okay. regular okay. regular fair Tuesday. Enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, I'm another thing. It's ridiculous that it's Tuesday. It Hello to our international folks. Of course, m uh, holiday here uh, on Monday. I think that's the other thing is I'm coming off of Labor Day weekend, so yeah. I got that extra day, day off, and so it's like, I, it. You have the Sunday scaries where it's like, oh, it's t tomorrow's Monday. I gotta get. I gotta get back to work. Yeah. But after like having that day off, I feel like it, for me it gets scarier, where it's like, oh man, I've been enjoying so much all work. this. Yeah. Okay. Not even that. There's so much work. It's just that like. Oh, I got this extra day off, and now I'm going back after like experiencing another this day. This is what life could be. If yeah. I didn't work, this is what life could be. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, like yeah. I got to retire early. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I'm sure that'll happen. Social Security's still going to be around, right, Kevin? I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Oh, dear. Yeah. It's based on how so. U.S. politics are going. I, I mean, they've know. been saying. I don't trust them. They've been saying Social Security's going to die forever. And as I get closer and closer, it's going to be there for me. I'm ready for it. Yeah. For you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you're way closer to the retirement. Way right? closer. <laughs> way closer. <laughs> 10 years Decades. way closer. Yeah, damn. How's your weekend? Uh, it was great. Uh, you know, uh, uh, my wife Jen was up at PAX, so it was me and Benny Mann running around doing all the dad and son activities. Hell Let yeah. me tell you, living the dream, taking them to a brewery, just sitting oh. there, <laughs> eat, having a beer, <laughs> eat, eating wings alcohol. with them, just having a great time. I don't yeah. drink the beer, but you know what I mean? We, we just, a little bit, just a little bit, though. Just a little bit. Mom's not here to stop me. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's up with that? And then if I was not taking care of Benny, I was playing Starfield still. Hell yeah. I cannot kick the junk, as they say. How's that going? Because you messaged us over the weekend, right. and you're like... Hey, I'm on playthrough. I forget what number you said, but like it was like four. I am currently on my fourth new game plus. Jeez. So that's my fifth playthrough of Starfield. And I, you know, I'm using this loosely. No spoilers, of course, ladies and gentlemen. I do want to, and I committed on Twitter that I'm going to do a one man spoiler cast isn't the right word, mm -hmm. but a one man like here's Becky Lynch's story. I want to talk about what my character's story has been because when people hit me up and like, I, hey, I don't care about spoilers. Like my friends have been DMing me and, and Paul Tassi from Forbes and I are going back and forth about what we're finding in new game plus. And we're, it doesn't matter. It's one of those things like, well, I, you keep talking about new game plus what's going on. I'm like, well, you have to understand how much I like wh where I've taken this character and how much I'm role playing this game. And then let me give you the context of why all this stuff, I think so rad and awesome. Yeah. But it's been the, yeah, there was a point where I was ending new game plus two. Yeah. NG2, as I call it. And I was like, all right, cool. We're going to get to NG3, and I am going to just, this is where I'm going to do all my side missions, all this stuff. This will be the world I live in. And it started, and that's when I slacked you guys. And I was like, holy fucking shit. And then I did the stuff there, and I started NG4, expecting oh, this is where I'll live. This got mm -hmm. there, another, oh, my fucking God, really. And again, I'm talking to Paul about what he's seeing, what he's finding, and all this yeah. stuff. And we're like, huh, okay. Some of the stuff you messaged me inspired me to want to go back to it. Sadly, I am busy with other games. More games are coming in for review. Yeah. Spoilers, it's a very busy fall. Yeah. But for some of the things you said, I was like, damn, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go back. Because I did make it partway through an NG, I'll, I'll call it NG1, right? yeah. New Game Plus 1. Yeah, 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 yeah. I made it partway through a New Game Plus 1 playthrough yeah. before I was like, okay, cool, I see what this is. All right, yeah. cool, I can put this down. I've gotten the experience. But the more and more you talk about it, the more and more I'm like, fuck, man, I, maybe there's something there. You know, I think you, you can go watch our review, obviously. Thank you so much for everybody who has supported us, the Kind of Funny Games cast Starfield review there, right? And I, and I was very clear of, like, I don't want to put a score on it yet, right? Because mm -hmm. I rolled credits last night, and that changed what I see what New Game Plus is, but I haven't experienced it, da 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 This is going to sound like I'm carrying water for Bethesda, but clearly I'm enjoying myself quite a bit. I don't think in my years I've ever seen the hyperbole of a developer slash publicist <clears throat> pre-launch mm -hmm. actually get delivered upon where, you know, like when it, we were at Gamescom and Pete Hines was like, 
it doesn't start till you roll credits and dot I'm doing that and it, we and I was, and everybody's like we love Pete don't get me wrong yeah, yeah, yeah. hey Pete thanks for tapping your leg all the time but we love Pete but it's like all right like we how many sure. times have we yeah. heard people say this and yet and then you get this and it's like fuck man wow yeah that's a great point where even now it's like it's such a personal thing of like what I'm wrestling and again like I and I talked about this in our review right I think and I'm like the more you put in the more you buy into it the more I think you get out of it mm. and I do think that means of course getting over being encumbered, getting over a bad UI system, getting over a bad inventory management, getting over the fact there's no local maps, which is, yeah, yeah. there's all the things that are like legitimate criticisms that I think are right there, but being so committed to like what is happening, what is going on, how this game is evolving, the story is and stuff. Like yeah. it's that thing of like, I am in this new game plus four, right? I, I, when I, when I got there, I was like, okay, well this is, still my story it is still my thing and i still need to see this through but i do need to switch over and do other stuff i do need to start playing other we have another game for review coming in mm -hmm. i i want to i'd like to i hear it's like five hours long beat volcano high and start volcano high before ps i love you this week to talk about that with you and janet it's like all this stuff but it's still that like the hooks are in me like yeah. last night when i when jen was cooking dinner and like i was sitting with benny for our cartoons i was like well I'm not going to start in those other games right now. And so I was doing backbone remote play, going through and doing stuff yeah. to set up the, the new game plus five that I'm working towards and see what happens yeah. there. And it's like, will it actually, you know, that's yeah. too far. I mean, the, the way that you guys have talked about the game, right? Specifically you and Paris and even Andy yeah. has made me look back and go, man, all right. Like it makes it feel almost freeing in the way that I've played the game, right? And I've gotten to points in the game where I'm like, all right, no, this just isn't hitting. Like we talk about the main quest, we talk yeah. about all the weird stuff, all the quality of life stuff. There was a moment, I didn't talk about this in my review, there was a moment where I was pretty sure I hard locked my save and then I ended up fixing it in a very jank way where I yeah, had to like, yeah. you know, I could, basically I couldn't grab jump and I had to like land on a planet first and then like go into my ship and then do a thing and then get back into space and then grab jump sure, so that sure, like sure. I could basically like get out of this hard lock I had gotten myself into. Yeah. And I got into another scenario where I like fucked up my save, didn't hard lock it by bug, it was more so... I hit a, hit a point where I, I got to an end of a quest and I, it was a big ship battle and now I'm stuck in the ship battle and I don't have any auto saves to go back to you because I like went oh, you just doing auto saves. Well, I went I went and did you should, look you'd be horrified at my save because it's just dozens. Well, I mean, I wish there was like I wish instead of one quick save they did three. Yeah. Because like if I had a couple extra quick saves that'd be because because that, that quick save all the time it's just the it's just the you know, manual. It's not save. that hard to manually save. It's not like that much more. Yeah. Time. But like why do I have to do that? You know, let me just quick save. Let the auto saves do the thing. The yeah, thing that yeah. fucked me is that I went and I captured footage for Roger doing TikTok. Roger always fucks it. And so that like deleted not deleted but like moved all my auto saves to that like new save I was using for that. And then uh, the one uh, manual save I had was in that ship fight. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. all right, I think I'm gonna put the game down here. The way that you talk about just living in the world and the way that like Paris and even Andy talk about like, yeah, I'm just doing this one thing and I'm just going with it. For me, that was my favorite parts of the game. Yeah, for sure. My favorite part of the game was going through the Crimson Fleet quest and just like having fun doing that and like focusing in on, all right, let's be a space pirate. Let's do this thing. And that was the most fun I had with the game. And that was toward like la um, later on in my playthrough. And I left the game with a really good taste in my mouth. One, because the second half of the main quest I really enjoyed. And then also, yeah, like that side quest I had a lot of fun with. The idea of picking up a fresh new game plus save and just going all right what planet can i fly fly to and what like role can i play to really sim whatever like you know job that i or whatever like i guess story that i'm giving to my character that sounds like a, a f way more fun way to experience the game as opposed to experiencing it as a traditional rpg yeah. weirdly enough and I, I you know i think and i'll talk about this in the one man greg way which is or uh, games cast it'll be spoilery it will be full of spoilers but not the spoiler cast probably because we'll still try to get together and do something with that eventually i assume but it's like it's just the coolest concept for a new game plus i think and that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons i keep doing it is like and again it, it works so well for what i'm trying to do in my head canon of what my what becky lynch's story is and all these different things like even it's like, will it ever be? I, 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 I don't want to say anything, and I, I don't mean, and I also don't want to set expectations high. Mm -hmm. I definitely think this is a thing that people might not connect with. I think again, back to my comment that I think of, um, you know, the more you put in, the more you get out. Like I said this in the review that I thought, you know, I've somehow had exactly the experience Bethesda as developers had. Somebody in a conference room when they laid out what it would be that has continued to New Game Plus to the point of like. There was a time where I'm like, all right, cool. I'm just going to live in New Game Plus 2. Mm -hmm. That'll That's going to be my world. And I was like, you know what? No. And it was then New Game Plus 3 was the one where I hit you guys up like, holy fucking shit. Yeah. And so there's a, 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 a reality for us where it's like, 
I stopped the, at New Game Plus 2, and I'm like, yeah, I've had fun, and blah, 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 and I, I didn't even know this kind of stuff was possible and happening, and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So the game just keeps compounding upon itself to where then you just don't want to stop playing, but then you got other things to play, but yeah. then all these things are going on. But then if you just don't like the core... If you don't, if you don't like the core fundamentals of Starfield, I don't think this is going to change it for you. Yeah, it's course. that kind of thing, right? Does it, I, would you right. say your score has gone up now, or not gone up? Yeah, but are you more solidified on the idea of giving it a four out of five? Well, then you start wondering, could it possibly be a five out of five for me? Don't be insane. Don't be insane. <laughs> I mean, right? But it's like it's like back to when we did the review. I was t I was like right of like I've had five out of five moments, mm -hmm. and I've had you know two out of five performances, and I've had three out of five. Like that's still yeah. happening, but the fact that like. I'm not finding new things that are disappointing. I'm only finding more five out of five things in it. And so, yeah, like, mm. it, again, like, we get to be very lucky that the kind of funny scale is ambiguous in terms of, like, a five out of five is not the same as a 10 out of 10 for my GM. We don't want it to be. We want it to be these discussion points, right? We're just saying the game's amazing. Mm. And, like, as I sit there slack-jawed, slacking you guys things, talking to Paul Tassi, like, that's the other thing, too, of just, like, I can't remember the last game, and I wouldn't count, like, Ragnarok where me and Barrett would nerd out in the car or something about it right because we're not like talking about that kind of thing yeah. we're talking like holy shit they did this they did that things that like I was talking to you guys about in the review or maybe when we were just talking about review one of the conversations I remember me and Barrett having I was like dude they got a lot of great ideas here and I'm not talking about like review scores I'm like they got a lot of great ideas here but I feel they take them to like 6 out of 10 they take them to 7 out of 10 mm -hmm. they don't take it to 10 out of 10 and it's that thing where it's like I ran into the thing I said I'm like oh man that's that they're taking yeah. this idea to a, an 8 out of 10. And then you start playing. You're like, oh, well, okay. But then you do it again and you do it again. And I'm talking to Paul who's finding not, not even the things I'm texting you about, which are the things he found were amazing. He's finding other things like, yo, over here references that. I'm like, holy shit, fuck, where is it? And like, I think it's right. Like, it's that kind of like sandboxy. You don't know what's happening. And again, it's going to be so fascinating for the game to be out to everybody yeah, and see I'm, what everybody finds. I'm, I'm so excited to see the game come out to everybody, see what those conversations are. Because yeah. like to your point of, you're t you talked about one of your favorite missions in an RPG. And when I heard, I, th I forget if I heard you talk about it directly or if I watched your TikTok, but I, th I think it was the TikTok. As I w watched through it, it was that thing where I was like, damn, I wish I got that quest. That, yeah. qu that quest sounds incredible. And I think back to the quests I got and I go to like the uh, Ryujin Industries thing that's on Neon and I was so disappointed by that quest line. And I go and like, I check up on uh, Mike while he's streaming, right? And it's like, um, it was like 8 a.m. I had just gotten into the office. He had streamed for 24 hours. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, how you like, how you liking it? How are you enjoying it? And he talked about, that same quest and was like, oh yeah, dude, that quest was trash, like all this stuff, right? And I'm like, right? Like I hated that quest. And then like I look toward toward your quest, I'm like, that sounds fucking great. And it's it's that weird, yeah, like it has high highs, low lows scenario. But what did you like about the Reunion one? I just thought it was bland and boring. Okay. Yeah. Right. It was that thing where the idea of it was so cool, right? Because it was, that was the one where it's like, oh yeah, come work for this mega corporation and you do the job interview and you do all that stuff and it's really, really cool. And then you get into the flow of the quest and it was just like Oh yeah, go over here, steal this thing, and it, the writing of it felt very boring and very like uninspired compared to the stuff that I've done with the Crimson Fleet, and compared to what you're talking about with the uh, your quest line. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. so yeah, like I'm so curious to see what people's journeys look like, and if we if it is that thing where the more you play it, the more I guess like the low lows fade into the background as you're able to it's dig out the gold that's in there. Hard for me to talk to the Reusion one, right? Because Becky Lynch is a good person and, and changed her ways, right? You know, yeah. From being just a derelict miner that was found and suddenly, you know, expl exposed to the constellation. But like when I did it for Sith Bike Mike, that was my Friday stream when you guys were doing Games Alien stuff. That was one of the main ones we did. Mm -hmm. And when I got there and realized what was happening, because I missed the, all the buildup. Like in my, I had, I think on one of my saves, gone and done the coffee run yeah. right where you get the coffee or whatever mm -hmm. and then jumping into mike's thing further along there was this okay cool we're building we're doing the thing and then like did you did you finish it or did you go i did not it? finish it no. did you get and the minor spoilers i guess for something that you could do in this run it's not even did you get the implant yeah okay i thought that was a neat thing and then, mm -hmm. but like again like getting to there and then influencing the votes and changing the thing and double crossing. I was like, yeah, man, this is like course corporate espionage, which isn't yeah. the most exciting thing I get totally. But I think that there's plenty of, okay, go clear the base and shoot the thing and kill all these people out there. Right? Like, I feel like it's got that balance of it. If you want to go find that, but I understand that, like, sure. that one quest is what yeah. it, it goes back into the overall conversation of Starfield in terms of like, I, for me, the, I thought the combat was fun, right? But when I'm playing an RPG, combat mm -hmm. isn't necessarily like, I don't want that to be my main bag. I get that in so many other games. Yeah. I want to be 
somebody who's good at persuasion or I want to be somebody who's good at like intimidation or in outer worlds, right? He had engineering and science skills and sure. all these things that he can get good at. Whereas in Starfield, I did not, I did not like the persuasion, right? Totally. I went Still hard sucks, with yeah. the persuasion. I'm like, oh man, okay, well that was a waste. Um, or I, not a waste, but like, it just wasn't as fun as I wanted it to be, right? As it is, it's not fulfilling. It's not fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then like, like when you in Baldur's Gate, try to influence something you roll the dice and yeah. as it go you're like this is fun could it work whereas this one i've done it where i i say the one thing to him and i get half the points say the other thing it doesn't work the uh, the half the point options back and i yeah. select that I'm like, oh, that's yeah stupid. and then i look through the the skill tree and i look at all the different traits and i'm like i don't think these are really speaking to me like i don't really care about the weapon systems in the ship i don't really care about yeah. like you know xyz like i i wish there was more there for the role playing aspect, right? Like the conversations, the like the um, you know affecting story stuff, affecting routes, how, how things go. And I think my the where I what I started to accept is that just this is just not this kind of RPG, mm. right? This is more of a hey, this is space sim. Like you are going through and you are yeah, like you are b being part of this mega corporation or you are doing this Mantis, Mantis quest or you're doing the Christmas Fleet thing. But it's it's less so. Oh, I am going to play this character that's going to affect the main story like it's not that kind of main story in sure, RPG. sure 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 um but yeah like i mean it's it's very fascinating already seeing the conversations that are happening around starfield with just the early access stuff that like i'm very excited to see it get, get out of people's hands yeah in, like 12 hours outrageous right and i know how many people have been playing early access and again it's that thing of too i think like people in the chat are like oh yeah i'm doing my new game plus and I'm ha I, I like this or i'm not as impressed and yada yada, yada. Mm. it's like again that thing of new game plus one and new game plus two i didn't think were like Okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm playing more. It was like, oh, oh, okay. But even then, it's like, eh, anyway, well, that's, then we get way out of yeah. it. Starfield's a lot of fun. I'm excited to see the discussion. It was, you know, surprising, if not heartbreaking, to be like, come downstairs to play some games. And I was like, well, I could start Baldur's Gate 3 on PS5. Mm. But I got to see this through. And that was yeah. kind of the thing with the new game pluses where I was like, okay, it was kind of like what I was talking about in the review of like, when I got the initial credits or was approaching end game uh, of my uh, OG, my OG game, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to roll credits and then take a look at what new game plus is and then be ready to move on. I'll, you know what I mean? I'll, and then like to be, Oh fuck, no, I'm doing this. And then like every time I'm like, okay, well if this happens, Oh no, they didn't do that. That is something else has changed and evolved and done whatever that I need to go chase. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, Starfield's pretty impressive, but I got some other stuff that's impressive like Final Fantasy 16, getting DLC sag after strike coming to video games and more because this it's kind of funny games daily each and every week down a variety of platforms. We run you through the nerdy video game news need know about. If you like that, be part of the show for free at kind of funny.com slash KFGD. Of course you can write in with your questions, concerns, squad up requests, anything about what you think the video game news of the day is going to be. Then of course, tune in to watch us record the show live. You can watch on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games and youtube.com slash kind of funny games. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody listening and watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and podcast services around the globe of course if you want to go that extra mile to support us why not head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny over on patreon.com slash kind of funny you can toss us some bucks and you could get each and every episode of kind of funny games daily ad free as a video in an mp3 you could get the ability to watch us record our podcast live as we record on like the kind of funny podcast it's recording early today of course you could also get that show ad free and all that jazz up there all the other podcasts up there you watch us do ps i love you watch xcast live as they watch them on demand up there ad free it'd be a great time and of course you you could get more than 300 episodes of exclusive content since October and physical items. There is a new poster up. Kevin, we didn't prep you for it. If you want to open up twitter.com slash kind and I didn't put it on the page yet either. I got more work to do too. Mm -hmm. Twitter.com slash kind of funny vids. No? Yeah, that's what we are. Kind of funny vids on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then scroll till you see the invincible artwork. It's like three, four there. Oh, yeah. I saw this. There you go. September 1st, we announced uh, this month's Patreon collector item by Fergie21 has us feeling invincible. Make sure to grab the, yeah. yours over on patreon.com slash kind of funny before the month ends. Is the, is the premium collector's item going to be a shirt like the Trog shirt last uh, month? Is it going to be a cool poster like this amazing one that's promoting Nitro Rifle, which I don't like one bit? Who knows? But there's always going to be something hot. cool. It's really odd. It's really great. Great job, Fergie. Uh, housekeeping for you know I also didn't talk about Epic Games remember kind of funny use the creator code kind of funny when you're checking out an Epic Games uh, store or when you're playing Fortnite Rocket League or whatever on your console of choice even if you're downloading something for free off the Epic Games store use the code kind of funny I'm sorry I cut you off I heard Fergie I did somebody named Fergie made that poster yeah Fergie 21 oh yeah 
Matt Ferguson. Oh, Matt Ferguson. Okay, yeah. gotcha. I didn't know if it was Black Eyed Peas, Fergie. You know what I mean? Fergie's like, you know what? I'm leaving all this music and pissing my pants behind, and I'm going to yeah. make posters it's for kind of funny. <laughs> I'm tired of being Fergalicious. Let me Much like our Cat Williams is remembered in our head for one thing, when yeah. Fergie Peter pants to I, rock the stage. I don't think I, kn- I knew that Fergie Peter pants. I never. It's one of those, that. as a consummate professional who wants to entertain, mm-hmm. I appreciate the story. Because it was that she was just like... They were like going to a show and she had to pee and they were super late. So they got there and pretty much ran on stage. She ended up peeing her pants. Wow. I believe I'm, she, I believe I she said it. I didn't know this. I believe she has confirmed this story finally after years of it. For a while it was like an urban legend, but there's a photo. Mm, but like, see, she, I, I think would, she's confirmed it. Chat, kind of funny. This is the that's perfect time. That she confirmed This it. is the perfect time for kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. Maybe again, I just believe in urban legend. Because you can, Batman cannot get that information out of me if that happened to me. If I was at a kind of funny I mean, line, it's I'd, pretty obvious. You know what I mean? No, I'm finding any. Oh, no, man, I had a water uh, b- a bottle in my pocket and like it burst. And so that's where all that came. I am not admitting that I peed on stage. Okay. <laughs> There's no way to get Labor that Day says, there. don't Google that on a work computer. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Classic cringe, Fergie pisses herself during a Black Eyed Peas concert in 2007. But I, now, this is, the, again, the art. Did we ever get confirmation on this? We need Snoops or whatever, Snopes. I take it back. If That picture is pretty damning. You There's nothing you can say. You gotta do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's nothing you can say. Housekeeping for you. The Starfield content is still continuing. Of course, last week we had our Gamescast review, Xcast, 48 hours stream, and more, including TikToks all about Starfield. This week, after, every day after KFGD, we're streaming the game with Mike, Andy, Greg, and or Gary, but today Roger kicks it off. That's right. More Starfield than you can shake a stick at. We will all be cycling in and out throughout the week to play more Starfield. Uh, of course, on Friday, I will be streaming with Gary Witta oh. as part of our gun dog promotion. As you might remember from our Vampire Survivor stream, uh, Gary did uh, agree to a trade with me for the Fantasy Critic where he traded me Starfield. We're, we're banning this next year, for by 50, the way. I, when That's I, so fucked up. You can go back and watch the clip where I say, oh, well, this is going to be banned for next year. Oh, when yeah. We, I, I give him 50 in, in universe dollars of the thing, and then I agree. Does he not know how it works? I agree. Yeah, you know, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. You think Gary gives a shit about this? If he, you went off of this, I'm gonna be so fucking mad. So what I said is I would do I would do not only a stream promoting gun dog pre-orders, Gary's amazing book, you should go pre-order right now. I would also then do a commercial for social media for the book. So God damn it. Yeah, it, it worked. I, I was there. checking fantasy draft this morning because uh spoilers for new dates replaced got delayed to twenty twenty four, and that was my counter pick. And so it was looking like I'm getting zero points off for my counter pick, which is Damn. really good. Yeah. And uh, Janet over here counter picked lies of P, and I'm sure that's going to do great. And so like right now, I'm, I'm it's looking up for me in terms of the me versus Janet race. But then yeah, yeah you come through with Starfield, and Starfield has Maybe 18 points last I saw. Yeah, it has an 88 on Open Critic, nice, which is really good. Loving that. It's fucked up. Before we get too far away, Mr. Hawks writes in to correct uh, and says, in a, from a 2014 interview, in an interview with Ebro in the morning on Hot 97, the LA love singer, uh, Fergie, revealed that a combination of a full bladder and a rush to get to the stage caused a memorable mishap. Quote, I'm running on and we jump on and do let's get it started and I get crazy and I jump across the stage and my adrenaline was going and gosh, she explained, I wish it didn't happen. It was so embarrassing. Fergie, Shout out Fergie. again, who gives a shit? You fucking rocked it. You were cool, and then you were cool about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And again, in 2007, you're like, oh, this internet thing won't take off. Yeah. Not everybody's going to be talking about me. <laughs> People are going to forget this. People will, of course, remember that I am a gorgeous, talented person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they won't remember the one time I peed my pants, yeah. but Greg Miller well, never forgets 16 Fergie. years later on a video game podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it gets brought back up. A lot of people wouldn't think of the truth about Fergie and Cat Williams, but Greg and uh, Blessing it's, will. It's the, it's the fact that, yeah, over the weekend, I saw a tweet uh, trending on Twitter that was like, oh, what's your favorite Cat Williams memory? And somebody quote tweets it with the screenshot of him being choked out by the middle school. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it came up like a couple of days after we had brought we it back up just I mean, in the office. It just really. always comes up. We're always talking about oh, it so over funny. here. Uh, over on Patreon, a new kind of funny next gen podcast is up featuring a big reveal from Barrett Courtney. What is it? Get your clippers ready. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Brave Athos, Jedi Master Deadpool, and Delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by Shady Rays and DraftKings Sportsbook, but we'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Five items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Great job fixing the fog machines, Kev. Yeah, no problem. How are you feeling after your... You were here for a lot of the stream, Kev. How did you, how did you recuperate and recover? Oh, I, I did really well. I mean, my, my big issue is I got the puppy. Yeah. So he's keeping me up. 
and and mess with my sleep. But it's it, it, things are going well. We're okay. getting there. Good. Number one on the Rupert Report: Final Fantasy 16 is getting two paid DLCs and a free update. We go to Game Informer where Wesley LeBlanc writes: PAX West is a video game convention. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was an interesting start to the article, too. <laughs> I was going to delete it out, but I was like, oh, no, it's, it's, I mean, I know where it's going, and if you were reading it, it would be funny. It's just like, oh, here's some breaking news. PAX West is a video <laughs> Let's game Let's talk about PAX West for a second. Here we go, Wesley. <laughs> PAX West is a video game convention that occurred this past weekend, and the cast of Final Fantasy 16 and localization director Christopher Michael Koji Fox spoke at length about the game, its characters, the world of... Valisthea. And more. Uh, at the start of their panel, though, Final Fantasy 16 producer uh, Naoki Yoshida uh, announced via video that a free update is available for the game right now alongside word the game is getting two paid DLCs. Yoshida also revealed that the PC version of Final Fantasy 16 is currently being developed at Square Enix. The highlights of the free update, which you can download right now, include alternate outfits for some of the main characters like Clive, Jill, and Torgal, and a transmog ability for weapons that allows you to change the appearance of Clive's sword while keeping the stats of your currently equipped weapon. Other changes are coming to the game in patch 1.102, including a quality of life change like arcade mode adjustments, new controller layouts, additional system menu settings, and several fixes to issues within the game. Quote, we've seen so many opinions and reactions from our community of Final Fantasy 16 players, Yoshida says in the video. But one thing that came through particularly strongly was how people wanted to see more of Valithea's Val- oh, yeah. Val- 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 story and spend more time with their inhabitants. To accommodate, the development team has started work on two installments of paid DLC, end quote. There's no word on when to expect these DLCs, though. Uh, Yoshida also announced that, quote, development on a PC version uh, is currently underway, end quote. Uh, He hopes to share more about the PC version of Final Fantasy 16 and the DLC's development before the end of the year. Blessing at Ayoye Jr. Greg Miller. Are you rejoicing? Uh, I think this is really cool. I think this is really awesome. Uh, I think this is really great for the fans that have been asking for DLC. I'm very hyped for this to come out and for me not to play it. (laughs) Oh, no! (laughs) Yeah, because, like, I'm not, I'm just not a DLC person. Yeah. It is very, it's it's with a rare occasion that I check out DLC. Like, even for me checking out the Horizon one, I think by the time we got around to that, I was was just in the mood for more Horizon. I think playing Call of the Mountain might have helped with that. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. Remember, that came out this year. Yeah, no, (laughs) no, don't forget PSVR, too. PSVR conversations. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. Uh, But, yeah, I'm I'm somebody who I, I, I... for me, with with one and done single player games that come out, even th- games that are forty to fifty hours long, right? Like I play it, I finish it, and then it's on to the next one for me. Even something as cool as the free update that they're putting out right now that has like all the cool alternate costumes for the characters, all the fixes, all that stuff. I think that's fantastic for people that get to the game later, or people that are just super fans that you know want to play this super game, want to want to come back to it over the course of however long, right? Like, that's such a cool thing. That's how I'm sure me and you played video games when we were younger, and it's For like, sure. oh yeah, these are the 10 games I have. I'm going to play them over, over and, and over, over again. Over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to experience any of this. I might play the DLC, though. Like, it, it the DLC is going to depend on how substantial is it and like how cool does it look? Like, sure. are you adding in a new icon that is going to be like a fucking banger story arc? I could... Oh my God. Sorry, yes. <laughs> did, 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 oh, ladies and gentlemen, oh welcome to the stage. You, know, you can take my microphone or you can do whatever you want. Well, welcome to the stage. Lead reviewer on Final Fantasy 16, Tim motherfucking Gettys. I'm so excited. That sounded like this. you had a megaphone, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of God. Yeah, I was like, in. who is there? Oh, yeah, there is a, a certain Leviathan bless that is coming through. Mm-hmm. We get hinted at it. We see it. We see pictures of it. It's coming, baby. Yeah. There's no way that we're not getting Leviathan. We're getting another icon, and it's going to be freaking awesome. Hell, yeah. Is that is that all you want from this DLC? Honestly, I just want them to deliver what I believe they're going to do. And here's the thing, Bless. Uh-huh. Me and you for years have talked to Michael Hyam about Final Fantasy XIV. We've seen the, the chatter online about how good this game is, how special the game is, and more so than anything, how special the expansions are, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Think of those emotional moments that people have every year or two or whatever that these things drop, and you just see Twitter blow up with people freaking out about however they're changing the world or adding to the story or these big, deep, emotional character beats. We both experienced Final Fantasy sixteen. We both loved it. Yeah. I want more, and the idea that the team that may, that does this so well so often for 14 is going to do this now for 16, this is the best possible news for me because I'm with you, the DLC, there needs to be that, that certain level of, but does it actually matter? Does it yeah. feel substantial enough to like really be a thing? 
I truly believe that Final Fantasy 16 is going to be that. If there's two of them, I can see one being a little less, and I can imagine a more, maybe a, a prequel spinoff story, maybe a Sid story. Oh, you know dude, I, mean? I would love a Sid story. A Sid story would do it for me. I was going to ask you, because since there's two paid DLCs, are these two different icons that we're getting? Like, what do you, how do you think they divvy that up? I mean, just, they could always pull some shit out and, like, add more stuff, but, like, story-wise of where we're at, yeah. I think Leviathan is the, the answer. Like, there's a lot of, of evidence uh, um, that people have been pointing out on the Reddits and everything, and also just playing the game, you see a lot of it. And even just, like, the box art stuff, like, not box art, but, like, promotional art for this yeah. game. It's like... There's one clearly missing, um, but I think that one of the, like one of the DLCs I imagine will be dealing with that. Will it be post the end? That would be interesting. Will it? Where, where does this fall? I'm yeah. not even sure if that's possible, but um, I think that the uh, the the most likely thing for one of the DLCs will be a different playable character, and I imagine it'll probably be Sid, which gets me really excited. That'd be really cool. And there's like a lot you can do with that, right? Because Final Fantasy 16 has moments in time that aren't aren't accounted for right like there's so much history like both with just the lore of the world they've set up right that's the, that's the reason why the active time lore feature was such a cool thing is that they've created a deep world here right they've created a world that they can expand upon and you know get deeper into certain aspects or certain kingdoms or certain whatever they have that kind of universe here that plus yeah like this is a game in a story that spans like a lifetime essentially yeah right and so like there's so much you can dig into there there's so much questions people have about like oh yeah okay so what was this character doing between this time and this time you can easily fill that out and that could be a sid thing because yeah i think sid at least for me is my favorite character i'm sure that's a fan favorite character because yeah. he was so good um but even yeah if we get more clive if we get more of the characters we already know if you get like another jill story there are so many characters in that game that you could do that for exactly and that's why i am so excited for this because i feel like i'm excited about many different things it's not like oh if they don't do this i'm gonna be upset mm -hmm. there's like 10 different potential things that i'm like oh that i cannot wait for that and what excites me is i'm excited from a story perspective but i'm also just excited from a gameplay perspective this game is just such a joy to play it is so freaking fun and rewarding to get better at the combat and i want more excuses to go back that aren't just uh time attack or aren't just like you know rank up skill based type stuff it's like yeah. i want like new challenges and like more to be able to have the the fun of an end game situation of uh, having your weapons all and abilities to yeah. fully maxed out, right? Like towards the end of that game, you were just throwing things down and it is satisfying as all hell. I want more to do with that. Yeah. So I, I'm really excited for this. Uh, the fact that there's two of them, I'm like, hell freaking yes. Um, I hope that we see these whenever they're ready. I, 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 I am a big fan well, you know, I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy X too. Let me put it that okay. way. Maybe not every single um, Final Fantasy sequel situation, um, but X2 I loved because it added to the story so much. It changed things up in a way that was really satisfying. Not perfect, but really enjoyed that. Final Fantasy XV, its DLC was a little bit more um, like piecemeal and like not as important, but it ended up being com completing that game, really. I think that Final Fantasy XVI's DLC is going to be much more akin to a smaller Miles yeah. Morales type thing where it does okay. feel like a bit more like, like almost like a 16 2. Yeah. And like, uh, but like a, not, a, not like in the same quarter way. of the size or if even sure. maybe a fifth of the size, but like, yeah, like really substantial stuff where I, I think more similar to a Final Fantasy 14 expansion. So yeah. a 10 to 15 hour experience out of a, one of these DLCs Come on, would man. be sick as hell. And yeah, I mean, it goes back to, in the way we talked about this game during the review time, I kept comparing it to Dragon Ball Z in the way that like the arcs work, where it is that, all right, we introduce the villain, we build that up, dope ass, um, uh, epic ass battle. All right, let's have that calm. All right, let's build up to the next villain. Boom. It feels like se seasons of television. And this could feel like we're getting another season of that. And that right there has me oh, excited. Hell yes. All right, Graham, uh, let you get back here. Hope you play Final Fantasy 16 one day. Oh yeah, Greg, are you ever gonna play Final Fantasy 16? I sure am, guys. Uh, it's still the plan uh, for me personally. Let's get through St Starfield here. Mm -hmm. Let's get through uh, Vacation a little bit here, where I'll probably play more Starfield, but we're also working on a redacted. Yeah. Let's. I want to touch. Is it the same redacted that I'm doing, or is it a different redacted? Um, no, it's a different one. Remember, okay. we talked about it. Oh, we're yeah, doing we one do redacted. Right. I'm doing the other. Yeah, redacted. you're right. We did talk about it. Uh, then what? I mean, I feel like. I, I don't, I will t touch Lies of Peas, but we all know it won't work for me. Lies mm -hmm. of Peas, the peas in a pod. <laughs> Lies of uh, I'll play Cyberpunk DLC. Then I feel like we're going to have a gap. 
I think we're going to have a little gap there before we get Spider-Man 2. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to have a gap there where I can I can fit in either, depending on my mood, Yeah. doing a just, you know what? I've had a lot of fun. We've all had our laughs. Let's do a mainline run of Zelda. Let's just okay. do the actual yeah. things. I've fucked around for 35 hours now or whatever doing shrines. Like, let's actually try to complete the story and see how that is. Or do I do my Final Fantasy run there and try mm. to get that done? Yeah, like I open up the my Blessing Super Fun Game Release calendar for 2023, of course, kindoffunny.com says calendar where you can find that. And what, like as I look at o- that October, right? October 5th is Assassin's Creed Mirage, which I don't think you're... I, I, you know, I love Assassin's Creed games. That one doesn't move the needle for me. Like, yeah. There's just nothing about Like, oh, it's more classic Assassin's Creed. It's Boston, which I'm not connected to. I mean, if it's like amazing, maybe like December, I pop it in and check it out. Yeah. And then we get Detective Pikachu, which I don't think either. That's, that's not, not much any of games. Wild Card Football, which I don't. Uh, Lords of the Fallen. And uh, again, we should point out that we're, we're, I'm, I'm talking about the big ones, right? Yeah. There's going to be a bunch of indies in there I'm sure I got to worry about. And like, honestly, the, the next big game that I think we're looking at, once we get into October, that I think you'd be all in for would be Marvel Spider Man. Yeah, right. Right. It's that. And then it's Alan Wake and then Metal Gear Solid Collection if you want to pick that up. But yeah, if you I will. October. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tinker, but I'm not going to like, you know, play, do not, like a full playthrough of every single Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, no, that's not a commitment thing for me. I, I might but, play through one again. Once I knock those two out, or at least get enough. I guess even Zelda, like I've had enough to taste. I know what Zelda's about, right? Like I don't think when we're talking about Zelda, I really don't fe- feel people being like, it's game of the year because of its story. Mm-hmm. It is like it's game of the year because it's an amazing game, yeah. which I already know. 30 hours, is, 35 hours, whatever it is, and I'm, I've played Zelda. <laughs> now that we're months past it, yeah. and now that like we're, I guess, in the middle of Starfield hype, yeah. and also post Baldur's Gate and like, all these other games, has there been anything that's like nudged Zelda off of that? I think it's going to be a very you? interesting conversation when we, with myself when I get to the end of the year. Because, you know, the way we do Game of the Year, Kind of Funny, is Kind of Funny's Game of the Year. And it is a, we do our personal top tens and we put them in there and da da da. And so then it will, like, right now, I, I don't think it's inarguable that Zelda's a masterpiece, that mm-hmm. Zelda's a 10 out of 10. That Zelda, but it's like, when I get there, do I do that? Because, like, objectively, and as a video game reviewer and as a critic and, you know, someone who wants to talk about the year, that's the best game that's come this year. But how do I want to handle my top, my top 10? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's clearly, it has not put its hooks in me the way, in the way Diablo did or the way Starfield did or, you know, like, the, in terms of, like, I haven't been able to put it down. I have to do everything I want to do. I play it, and I love it, and I have a great time with it. Every time I pick that game up, I'm so stoked to be playing it and having fun with it. Mm-hmm. But it's not so compelling that I feel drawn back. So it's like, do I sit there and I go, oh, well, clearly this is game of the year, so it's game of the year. Like, because I know yeah. it's game of the year. I know, and I, I'm playing, and I know what an amazing game it is. Or do I sit there and go, you know what? Let's actually do, like, a ranked out what I think, what I've played, what I what's spoken to me. Yeah. And then how much, and I, would that even have, that, and the best part about that is, even if I did that, even if I left Zelda completely off the list, which I oh, would, yeah. of course. Okay. But I mean, if I did, like, Does that, do that wouldn't stop the fucking train, the runaway train that even, Zelda is. Even for me, like, I'm more excited about what the industry conversation is when we get to Game Awards, when we get sure. to, like, Game of the Year across different outlets. Who do you think the biggest threat to Zelda is? Baldur's Gate 3. Like, like, across 100%. the industry. I think there's a chance. I think there's a good chance, actually, that Baldur's Gate 3 wins, like, overall Game of the Year at the Game Awards. I'll put it, like, maybe 40% Baldur's Gate, 60% Zelda at this point, just based on conversation and based on, it's what we talk about every year of the sequel versus something that's come through and is new and fresh. Obviously, Baldur's Gate 3 is a sequel, but the last (laughs) Baldur's Gate was fucking 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. And, like, it is this splash, right? It is this, oh, this is doing something on a level that I didn't, it's unexpected as well. Um, Yeah. Yeah, like, when we get there, there's a funny TikTok I saw over the weekend where, it was, uh, it was like SpongeBob and Patrick like doing like a, it was a fight scene in, in SpongeBob, but like they were punching air and like the, it was a picture of Spider-Man 2 and a picture of Starfield. And then it transitions to like this anime Dragon Ball Z fight. It's like epic fight between Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and Baldur's yeah. Gate 3 for a game of the year. I really think that's what it's coming down to of like, all right, cool. Like, yeah, these games are, even the games that are making big splashes, the games that would be easy contenders in any other year when we talk about something um, uh, like Spider-Man 2 or Final Fantasy 16 or Starfield or whatever, right? Like, even those, it's like, no, Baldur's Gate 3 and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom are having another level of conversation that, like, if these are 10 out of 10s, this is an 11 out of 10 type situation here. And so, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm excited for it. I know for me, I've only played... 21 hours or so of Baldur's Gate 3, which is basically nothing, which is yeah. funny to think about. Yeah, yeah. But my experience in those 21 hours has been so fucking good that I can't imagine it not on my top five. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm so anxious to get to starting it on PS5. Yeah. Like, I feel like, you know, people always, it's been interesting, especially with the post Zelda coverage, where, you know, 
so many people were like, oh man, I wish they would have, they, they did their, you know, weak impression of Zelda. Uh, I wish they did more updates on what they thought of Zelda and not even spoiler cast stuff, just like check-ins. And it's always been that thing of like, especially for me, who's played so little Zelda, it's like, well, I want to go where my passions are, but I also, do you need me to come in and say it's awesome and amazing? And like, how many, you know, yeah. what, what, what's the thing? And so like, that's where we're at right now. I feel like this week it was like, I really feel like I need to play uh, Volcano High rather than Baldur's Gate because like I mean Baldur's Gate I'm sure it, right now if I stopped everything and committed to Baldur's Gate for PS I love you on Thursday right the impressions are going to be pretty much probably exactly what our review impressions were mm -hmm. where it's like yeah I've played five or six hours I do not like the combat but everything else is amazing right mm -hmm. like I don't think the controller itself and being on the big screen is going to fix when I was like oh I don't fully no. get how to fight and do and so then it's like okay, like, I need to put way more time into that, whereas, I, you know, Volcano High, I feel like not many people are talking about it, if it's good or bad. I saw one review pop today, I think from 6-1 Indie. Like, it's like, okay, maybe I get in there, and that's, you know, whatever, but yeah. there's a whole many, million things to figure out on that. I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's go to number two on the Roper Report. Uh, SAG AFTRA to vote on a potential strike for video game actors. This is James Batchelor at gamesindustry.biz. SAG AFTRA is calling on members to vote on whether or not the union should be given authority to declare a strike for video game actors and performers. In addition to its strike against TV and film production companies, the union is currently negotiating the terms of its interactive media agreement with a number of video game publishers, developers, and service firms. The union is calling for wage increases and protection against the unrestrained use of artificial intelligence, among other things. If members vote to authorize the strike, it does not necessarily mean that the strike action will take place. Instead, as SAG-AFTRA explains on its website, it gives the union the option to initiate a strike if negotiations with video game companies fail to produce a deal that satisfies its members. SAG-AFTRA is currently preparing to bargain with 10 companies that handle uh, voice, motion, and performance capture in video games. They are... Activision Productions, Blind Light, Disney Character Voices, Electronic Arts Productions, Epic Games, uh, Formosa, Intera Formosa Interactive, Insomniac Games, Take-Two Productions, Voice Work Productions, and WB Games. Audrey Cooling, a, sporks, a, sporks, a spokesperson for the video game producers that are party to the interactive media agreement, told GamesIndustry.biz, quote, we want a fair contract that reflects the important contributions of SAG after represented performers in an industry that delivers world-class entertainment to billions of players around the world. We are negotiating in good faith and hope to reach a mutually beneficial deal as soon as possible, end quote. The union is asking these companies to agree to the following. Uh, the same wage increases for video game performers as those in TV and film. 11% retro—this is still one bullet point. 11% retroactive to the deal's expiration, and 4% in both the second and third years of the agreement. The union argues these are necessary to account for inflation. Artificial intelligence pro protections around consent, control, trans transparency, and compensation on-camera performers to be given rest periods of five minutes per hours, the same as off-camera performers. Set medics to be present where there are stunts or hazardous work is performed, as is the case with TV and film. Uh, pro, uh, prohibitions against uh, stunts on uh, performers' self-taped auditions. Uh, protections against vocal stress. While many of these are similar issues to those discussed in the ongoing strike against TV and film production, SAG-AFTRA emphasized the interactive media agreement in a separate contract and will not have any impact on the other strike. Like uh, CJ says, let's be honest, Greg is never going to sit down and play Baldur's Gate 3. Fuck you, CJ. I'm going to do it. Back to you. We'll see. No, I'm just going to believe in you. Uh, I want to play. Like, it's not even like, oh, I got to play it. And I don't, and I'm not even throwing shade. Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy is a, oh, I have to play that. Yeah. It's not that I don't, I, I played that first uh, three hours of it and I was like, oh, this is cool. But again, it wasn't cool enough that I was like, I got to get back to it. Like, Baldur's Gate 3 is, fuck, I really should play that. One of the big things is I'm going on, uh, I'm taking a two week vacation after this. And it's like, that first week, I will not have a PlayStation with me. So it's kind of like, eh, do I really want to start Baldur's Gate 3 for yeah, three nights and then, and take then yeah, take a big break? So fuck you. Anyways, back to this stuff. Get yeah. paid. Get, yeah, get paid, get better working conditions. Um, I think it's good that they're moving over to the video games industry and trying to get that going there as well. Tom says, I'm 70 hours in and not done. I'll be shocked if Greg knocks out Baldur's Gate 3. Are you fucking deaf? Did we say I was going to finish Baldur's Gate 3? He said, I'll be shocked if you play Baldur's Gate 3. I'm going to play Baldur's Gate 3. 
God None damn. None of us here are going to finish Baldur's Gate God 3. God fucking I damn it. That. We're not going to finish Baldur's Gate 3. Um, but no, I think that I, this is great, right? Yeah, like you said, get paid. Get those better working conditions. Yeah, I, yeah, I like the fact that they're moving over the games industry. Because, like, you know, vi- uh, movies and TV are so <clears throat> visible, right? And so, and like, sag after is already involved in that so, so heavily. Um, video games, younger medium, right? Like, I think yeah. you need those regulations in that are comparative to what's going on in tv and movies to make sure that people are being treated right in the video games industry because it can be it can feel like more of a wild west situation right when you're more of a uh, of a younger industry and so i love reading these things yeah like the artificial artificial intelligence being uh, more of a thing and us seeing what the effects of that can be and probably what a lot of the utilization of that can be in voice acting and performance stuff it's a lot of scary shit like it's a lot of stuff that like could p- put people out of the jobs and also like lead to less quality work because you're focusing 100%. on AI as opposed to like actual human ability. Um, so yeah, I like that they're including these things here. I like that they're including all the rest of, I like that they're trying to do their best to make it comparative to TV, to TV and movie, because it shouldn't be a thing of like, you know, Oh man, I work in video games. So I'm going to be treated uh, worse by like, just by default. Right? Like that shouldn't be the case. Um, and so yeah, go get them. Yeah. A hundred percent. Uh, you know more power to them it should be there and i think we all we can all admit are the games we love wouldn't be the same without the performances that uh they're there for and i know yeah. we're again a cart before the horse here they're not striking yet yeah i, I hope think, i believe the vote goes through in like um about a month yeah at the end of the month and i hope that what if that's the pressure needed to get these uh, 11 studios or production companies to get in line and be like cool do it because you look at the hollywood strike right now and it's like the Hollywood studios could not be more vilified and clearly they're going to lose. So just give up already. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's not going to happen that way. Uh, interesting. Of course, remember not too long ago, we went through a video game voice actor strike uh, 20 from October, 2016 and November, 2017. Mm. There was a sag after a video game strike against the same 11 companies at a glance. I'm making sure that it, uh, I'm not missing anybody, but yeah. So let's just not do that. Let's just, let's just get let's it. Done. Let's not do it again. Okay. Also, while we're talking about this, well, um, shout out to, shout out to Ben Starr. Because we, we, I meant yeah. to say this during the Final Fantasy 16 thing of like, oh hell yeah, Ben Star getting more, <laughs> getting more work. Love to see it. But then also, yeah, now that we're here, yeah, hire more, hire Ben Star for more things. He should be in everything. He was at PAX. He was at PAX. I know. PAX I was, is a video game convention that took place this weekend <laughs> in Seattle. <laughs> I was upset that I didn't go to PAX specifically because Ben Star was there. It's fucked up they didn't come back to visit us because it's close enough. He's on our coast. He claims to be a big kind of funny best friend. You, I mean, Seattle, he claims that, and then he went on like, like LA. He went on every other podcast and was like, oh, "I'm he, a huge giant." He, I'm glad fan. you saw oh, this man. too. I'm he's a huge destructoid fan. Getting dinner with with Tamora and Lucy. Yeah. Well, like, Tamora and Lucy, like, don't even get me started on them. Yeah. If you got more than a thousand followers and you come to San Francisco, they'll take you. To, they'll take you. Oh, for They're sure. They're desperate. They're desperate. It's it's embarrassing, honestly. Of course. What? <laughs> 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 well, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of being desperate, have you heard of patreon.com slash kind of funny over on patreon.com slash kind of funny? Of course, you could get each and every episode of the show ad free. You could get more than 300 bonus episodes of content we've done since October. You can watch us record the podcast live as we record them. You can get them on demand ad free. Like I said already, uh, you could also get all sorts of cool stuff like the new poster. <gasps> but most important for right now. You can get each and every episode of Kind of Funny Games daily ad free. But since you're not on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny, here's a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Every purchase supports the Shady Rays Impact Program, which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. Exclusively for y'all, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. You can go to ShadyRays.com and use code KINDAFUNNY for 50% off two pairs of polarized sunglasses. You can try for yourself the shades that are rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Again, that's shadyrays.com slash kind of funny. 
This episode is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. We've had seven months without an NFL game, but for all of you football fans out there, good thing that's over. NFL is here and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer for week one. This week, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just five bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game game day this September. You can check out the app to see what you get. You can download now and use code kind of funny to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. That is code kind of funny only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, you can call 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text H-O-P-E-N-Y 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call telephone number 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpd.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort KS. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility, terms and responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after insurance, eligibility and deposit restrictions. Apply. Number three on the Roper Report, we are getting a stray movie. This is Nick Romano at EW. Following the success of its debut feature, Nimona. Never heard of this. Nimona's great. What is it? Uh, it's a, a cartoon movie? Yeah, it's like an animated, uh, like released exclusively on Netflix yeah. from Annapurna. I'll tell you what, Jen started, Jen went to uh, Seattle and they did like team bonding stuff mm-hmm. and they ended up, I forget where, uh, some music, but they had a Coraline exhibit. Okay. The movie Coraline. Oh, were they at the po- um, po- um, Mopop? Sure. Museum maybe. of Pop Culture. That makes yeah. sense, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. Uh, but she came back. She's like, let's watch Coraline. I'm like, ah. She's like, did you ever watch Coraline? I'm like, never watch Coraline. I don't mm-hmm. really, you know, dig that. She's like, oh, let's watch it. And I was like, I don't really want to watch this. And she's like, no, let's watch <laughs> it. We got through half of it last night. I was like, ah, oh, fuck this shit. Why do you sound like you're racist against animated movies? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of am. <laughs> no, no, if it's not a superhero, I'm kind of like, man, I don't know. I don't this whole thing. Like, <laughs> Why? I don't, don't, don't worry I, I can do a lot with my time. Why am I doing this? Why am I watching this shit? You know what I mean? Old button eyes. Anyways, let's get back to it. Following the success of its debut featuring Nimona, Annapurna Animation is ready to launch its next phase of movies. Multiple projects are now in the works as key creative positions have been put in place, including a new project from Nimona co-director Nick Bruno and the next title from Ice Age director Chris Wedge, EW can report exclusively among other intriguing items on the agenda of the division are plans to adapt video games from Annapurna interactive, the gaming branch of the indie studio. First up is stray the award winning adventure game from the developers at blue 12 studio released in 2022 stray puts players in control of a stealthy cat who must traverse an underground city populated by robots and mutant bacteria with the help of a friendly drone B12. An animated movie based on Stray is in active development. Other titles in Annapurna's, I'm sorry, in Annapurna Interactive's gaming roster uh, include the Time Looper Thriller 12 Minutes. How are you excited about that one? Excited? I guess this is just them talking about the roster, not about projects. My apologies. Well, we don't possible. need, everybody remembers Annapurna. We know Annapurna pretty well. Uh, like we said, 12 Minutes, uh, Florence, uh, If Found, yada, yada, yada. The yada. Pathless. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I got two things here. <clears throat> He's got two, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I'm very excited for this. Uh, I can take a nap without having a controller in my hand. Bada bing! <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> that game put me to sleep. See, I'll tell you what, since it wasn't a great game, mm-hmm. contrary to many of your opinions, it wasn't a great game. I do think it could be a fun, uh, hey, here's a movie. Here's an inner, hey, let's have a movie yeah. where we'll just tell you the story. You don't got to just walk around and rub Honestly, on these guys' legs. I'm actually with you. Yeah, jokes aside, I think Stray can make a really interesting movie, especially because you can do, it's Annapurna, and Annapurna are on their, like, you know, artsy fartsy bag. And yeah. so like, I think you can make a really fun artsy movie out of stray. That is, Hey, you're following a cat and it's about all these, this robot dystopia. Like yeah. that's a really cool idea for a movie right there. Um, my second thing is, yeah. Like, are we going to get a 12 minutes movie? Is it going to be as bad as the game? You're such a monster. That game is terrible. <laughs> not terrible. Not I terrible. hated 12 minutes. I enjoyed it. Stray. I thought was okay. I stray. Actually, that was a, 12 minutes bad. Do you think it's because, your puzzle poppy powers are waning and you weren't that good at it. You couldn't figure no, it out. No, it's because the puzzles were bad. <laughs> Those aren't good puzzles. And also the story was weird. <laughs> yeah, all the story was weird. The story was weird. Story was weird for sure. But, uh, I guess my third thing, third thing with this too is, yeah, I think it's neat to see the um, collaboration between the Annapurna video games and the Annapurna, you know, movies and TV production because there is something special there in terms of 
both of their outputs, right? We talk about how Annapurna has a specific vision and style of video games they put out, and I always make fun of like, oh yeah, it's um, white people in Portland, like the hipsters up there making all these video games. But it is there is a vibe that Annapurna <laughs> has with their video games, and like I think because their film division is so good, it's specifically um, now their animation stuff with Nimona, right? Nimona was very strong. I think being able to look at your catalog and go, what if you made a Thirsty Suitors TV series sure, or sure. a Thirsty Suitors movie? Or like, yeah, what if we made a Journey movie? Again, like that's like that kind of like artsy fartsy stuff that yeah, I think could be kind of sure, cool. For sure. So this is exciting. Number four on the Roper Report. Alone in the Dark gets delayed until January because October has too many monsters. This is Jason Finelli at GameSpot. Among a busy day, among a busy... October for video game releases, the Alone in the Dark reboot might have been overshadowed by adventuring plumbers, dark places, and friendly neighborhood superheroes. THQ Nordic didn't want to take that chance, and the game will now launch on January 16th and kick off the new year with a scare. THQ Nordic made the announcement via the game's official X account. Yuck. Where it posted a picture reading January 16th, 2024 in large white letters. The post also bluntly explained that October was too busy. The game would be better served releasing without much else around it. And so the date was moved. Quote, horror games thrive on the eerie embrace of solitude something that is impossible to achieve in a gaming month as busy as october the post read to ensure a breathtaking experience for everyone we have made the decision to move the release of alone in the dark to january 16th 2024 good good on them yeah i in this write-up right they mm -hmm. talk about adventuring plumbers dark places and friendly neighborhood superheroes what they don't mention is sonic the hedgehog and that is because Sonic the Hedgehog also needs to move out of October. Get out of the way, Sonic! <laughs> Get out of... You see Alone in the Dark doing it. I know Sonic is a different beast from Alone in the Dark, but still, Sonic, I don't know if you want to compete with Mario and Spider-Man. Get out the... Get He's out not of afraid. October. He's not afraid. He's going to break Which it. I respect, because I think in terms of recognizability, like, Sonic is up there with Mario and Spider-Man, but just don't compete... Game it's to game, it seems pretty foolish to do. Yeah, that. get out, get out of October. It's a jam it up year, so yeah, alone in the dark, trying to get some traction. January probably works out really well for it. Oh, yeah. it does. You look at this, and I am like, all right, cool. When am I going to balance in? I hope Spider Man gets here early so I can get to Alan Wake and da 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 da. But then I also originally been like, I'd love to fit in Resident Evil Four in Spooky Times mm. too. Like, mm, let me yeah, and I guess it's a bummer for them not being able to hit the Halloween. Yeah, but again, that's what like they're going for here, obviously. Yeah, I feel like they'll be fine though. There's always so much Halloween content, and horror fans yeah. do go wherever the horror game is. They're hitting the was it the medium that also was in like a January that slot? That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah so they're hitting yeah. that that right. I, honestly, Everybody and I do think like you know we've talked a lot about Embracer. We've talked a lot about THQ Nordic. Mm -hmm. It is that question of like, what is the quality of this going to be? You know, they they do need some quality titles. I don't know what you're going to get. And I do think that in January, a 7, 5, 8 game has yeah. a better chance of getting played than being out there. And I, I'm just talking through my teeth. I don't know anything about the game, but we'll see. Number five on the Roper Report and final for your month. No, Tuesday. Jedi Survivor is getting another patch. EA tweets, patch seven for Star Wars Jedi Survivor arrives today, the 5th. Performance mode on consoles has been completely reworked. Let's go. To provide a solid 60 frames a second. Let's go. Additional performance and optimization improvements for PC have also been added, <laughs> including DLSS support. There's a whole laundry list of things up there, but that's great about the performance patch. This is the patch I've been waiting for. Yeah. Like, this is what I was talking about during the review of, like, I did the performance mode just was not, was not what I was looking forward to out of performance mode out yeah. of Jedi Survivor. And I, I kept saying on that review, I'll come back to it in July. I'll come back into it in July. And I, like, keep popping back momentarily, but every time I pop back in, I'm like, uh, this isn't grabbing me. And also, like, I still don't know if this is what I'm looking forward to out of fixes yet. Yeah. Them, yeah, dropping. Yeah, we've totally reworked um, the performance mode to provide a solid 60 FPS. I, th I think it's time. That's great news for me. Uh, of course, this is one of those games that, you know, in a year of just banger after banger after banger after banger, I played, I reviewed, I loved, I do want a platinum. And it has been just sitting there like, I'm not getting that anytime soon. So the fact that when I do get back, it'll actually look better and run better. I'm all yeah. about. Yeah. I think I, I got it similar to you with Final Fantasy and uh, Zelda. I got to yeah. be time for finishing Jedi Survivor because I'm probably solidly halfway through. Okay. Um, you and start, you think you can drop back in? Oh, I'll drop back in. Okay. Yeah, I'm not re <laughs> I'm not going all the way back. Uh, like, I like the game a lot, but I don't like it that much to like, sure. play the whole thing again. But yeah, like, I, I, I think I'm going to pick it up just so I can finish it. Literally just for, like, game of the year conversation. Of course. How, do you think this ends up in our top five mm, of the year? No. Do you think it has that kind of... I don't think it does. Do you think this ends up nominated in game of the year awards for game awards? For game awards? Yeah. I would say it's possible, not probable. Okay. 
You know what I mean? I'm so excited to see what those it's five games well, are. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how many they're doing this year either, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would say no. But I, I mean, if it did, I'd be like, oh, that's great. But I, yeah. I mean, like, this fucking year. Yeah, I feel like they usually cap out at six. And what you're talking, Zelda and Baldur's Gate 3 probably not locked. Final Fantasy 16 is probably in there. You assume Spider-Man 2? Oh, yeah. Spider-Man we're, assume, 2. we're assumption. I don't know. And then you, I think it is like. What about Alan Wake 2? Alan Wake 2. Maybe. Diablo 4. Because again, maybe. you're back to things catching things off guard. Yeah. yeah. Diablo, I think, is going to be a fascinating one. As someone who's like addicted to it and loves it and is still playing it with Jen and yeah, yeah. Like, is it a top five industry wide game mm-hmm. of the year? I don't know. I think that's a top 10 for a lot of people. Of, wow, I had so much fun and I played hours and hours and hours yeah. of it. But like, are they like. There's Armored Core. Yeah. A lot of yeah. Hi Fi Rush. <laughs> what, yeah, I was going to say, what indies are we missing that have really. Oh, what was the Dave? The I mean Dave the Diver. Dave the Diver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the Dredge? Was that the one with the boat? A lot of people like Dredge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good year. It has been a good year, and it's not over yet. But guess what? That Jedi Survivor patch is out today, and Game Awards and all that. That's so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the Mom and Grop shops today, where would I go? You would go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Hogwarts game. Yeah, Hogwarts. I, it'll be very fascinating to see what happens there. Yeah. Uh, out today, uh, Chance Golem. of Senar. Huh? Golem. Lord of the Rings. Golem, Golem of yeah. course. Street Fighter. Uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Uh, Rune, Factor, Rune Factory 3 Special on Switch. Abris. Build to Destroy on PC. Kovax Pitch on Switch. Totally Accurate Battle Simulator on, P- on PlayStation. Across all the PlayStations. And then... The Last of Us Halloween Horror Nights house is open now at Universal Orlando and coming September 7th to Universal Studios Hollywood. I love that we said all those games. We'd even say Starfield. I mean, it's not technically out yet. It's not out today. It's out like tonight. Well, no, not for out today. I'm talking about for like Game of the Year or Game Awards nomination. Oh, great point. Yeah. I mean, I imagine that gets there too. It's still like, like you, I, I mean, who knows? Mm-hmm. And I, it will be fascinating to see like what that actually, where that's going to be. Whatever. What are you? Yeah. Fuck, dude. It just keeps going. I know. Uh, new dates for you. Uh, Evo Las Vegas 2024 is now July 19th through 21st. Changed from July 26th to the 28th. What happened there? Did oh, I have there? no idea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Replace has been delayed till 2024. Little Gator Game is coming to all the Xboxes and all the Playstations on September 26th. Annapurna Interactive's Solar Ash is coming to Xbox Game Pass and Switch September 14th. Uh, we have our Game Pass for September updates for right now. Of course, September 6th, tomorrow, Starfield. September 14th, Solar Ash. September 19th, Lies of P. What a fucking service. I know, that's an excellent month right there. <laughs> Deal of the day for you. I will read this tweet from PlayStation UK <laughs> as they wrote it. Treat yourself to 19 inches of Venom and more with Marvel's Spider-Man 2 Collector's Edition. In pre-order. You can pre-order right now. 19 inches get that, of venom. Get that hot, hot 19 inches of venom inside your house. You know what I mean? That's what you need right now. my house. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. More dude. than my house. <laughs> uh, let's move on to a little segment we call You're Wrong. When you're watching live on Twitch and YouTube, we ask you to keep us honest by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. So we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening on podcast services around the globe we only got one today robbie rob wants to nickel and dime and says starfield is not coming out in 12 hours like early access it will unlock at 5 p.m pacific time tonight september 6th so six hours six hours from gotcha okay yeah cool all right thank you very much robbie rob ladies and gentlemen This has been another episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily. Remember, each and every weekday, we're here to run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you like that, of course, you should be part of the show by writing in for free at kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Then when you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames and youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, you should keep us honest on kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Of course, it's great to watch us later. You can watch us on YouTube. You can watch us on the podcast services. We'll listen on the podcast services. If you want to go the extra mile, though, and support us, go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny, where you can get each and every episode ad-free. Of course, you get a bevy of bonus content. You could get that cool Nitro Rifle poster that in the style of Invincible this month. There's ho- so much good stuff up there, including Daily Greg Ways. Uh, you know, like we're talking about Bless Who. Uh, yep. No, Kind of Feudy. Kind of Feudy. And I was, what I was really reaching was Next Gen Podcast. Mm. There's a new Next Gen Podcast up with Bear doing cool stuff that we talked about in tease. We didn't say what it was, but it's cool. You should go see it. Anyways, I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, we have a Super Chat Post show to do. Andy's going to come out and talk to us here. You should be a part of that if you're there. And then, of course, like I said, all week long, we are streaming Starfield. Roger will be taking over, so you should check that out. It'll be a separate video on YouTube, of course, but you know where to get it. Until next time, 
It's been our pleasure to serve you. Here comes Andy Claus. Here comes Andy Claus. Right down Andy Claus lane. Do you think PlayStation UK knew what they were doing? Yeah. And they tweeted about 19 inches of Venom? 100% you know what you're doing when you say that. Thank you, Barrett. It's a lot of inches. Too many inches, somebody say. No, I think that's... I feel like once you, small, once you get around like three or four... <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, whoa, we're pushing it in inches. Let's, let's, you let's know, not 19? be absurd. Let's not be absurd <laughs> let's here. Not get crazy. Like, of that is totally fine. Right? Yeah, 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 totally, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, hey, everybody. Welcome to the post show. Um, I wish I had my Streamlabs dashboard login, but I don't. Mm. So. Interesting. Can, <laughs> can somebody help? Oh, I guess I see some notifications here. I can open up Super Chance for you. I don't, I don't have the link to that thing. Maybe, oh, maybe just give me the, oh, there's not a mouse connected in that. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Welcome in, everybody. We're doing a super chat post show with our super hosts. Uh, it's Tuesday. Feels like a Monday. Yep. It's a, it's a Tuesday that I like like a Monday, you know? I feel that. This is the right th site, right? I can log in. Here. That's it. Oh, okay. fuck yeah, man. You're so on it, big dog. I'm so happy. I'm so. Oh, oh. oh so it does have a mouse. Cool. Thank you. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, what'd y'all do over the weekend? Hung out with Ben, played a lot of Starfield. Yeah. 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 You've been playing Starfield, too. I see oh, my there. God. Day and night. Hell, yeah. I played a lot of Redacted. A lot of Redacted. I played a decent <laughs> amount of Redacted. Uh, I just Redacted all over the room. Let dude, me tell you. Yeah, dude, I feel that. <laughs> Let me tell you. It's a mess over there. How many hours into Starfield are you right now? Okay, so... I re-bought Starfield. Repurchased it. Why'd you... Okay. Why? Because you can't, apparently full mod support isn't supported ah, on the that's... Xbox Game, Pi, Game Pass PC app. Okay, okay. Mm. So, I re but then here's the thing. Somebody in my comments was like, I'm installing mods, no problem. I was like, oh, well, fuck me then. Uh, because a, a couple of mods weren't, <laughs> weren't working on my end uh, for PC. And also, I hit up Olive Party. I was yeah. like, God, hey, the stuff I, Olive Party's been doing so amazing. Mm. I was like, I know how to texture map back from my... Game, game dev, dev these uh you know being in the being in photoshop me mixing with messing with texture mapping uh, and like yeah. normal maps and this and that so like i was like i want to get in there i just don't know how to even start the process of it sure yeah, yeah, yeah. uh which is the right mouse button <laughs> which one should you which one are you gonna shoot one, i'm just <laughs> who's the imposter <laughs> oh this one this like this one this darker one is so cool i like this yeah, it's cool. Maybe just because I've looks like a newer model, yeah. Yeah. Or maybe yours just is worn over the. No, because this is newer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I got this one like a year ago or so. Um. So yeah, I rebought it on Steam. Yeah. And uh, not that I rebought it. The first copy was a review copy that yeah, was free. Yeah, yeah. But I bought it on Steam and um, restarted everything. From did the I ground up? Did I try to move the save over? Yeah. Tried all I could, Greg. Mm. And. Unfortunately, the save files are a bit different format, which can definitely be fixed. Uh, but I was telling my Twitch chat, I felt like I was in community college going to like my first coding class, trying to figure out how to get this save file from the Xbox game. It just it was a nightmare. It was like I, I am way in over my head right now. So I restarted everything and glad I did feel like I have like a lot of a lot better context for what I'm doing at the beginning of the game. Sure. And I am somehow enjoying my experience even more That's awesome. on steam now i am 32 hours in so i put in 32 hours over the weekend wow over like two days it's yeah. been disgusting That's so impressive. Yeah, yeah. um oh my god my ship is starting to look sick the burning star five i can't call it the burning star four which is a coheed and cambia reference character limit one digit off because ah. you got to have the roman numeral did you do the thing where you shoved him in at all you gotta have i mean i did close in burning star and made a yeah, way yeah. Just, it just didn't look right so burning star five is the name of my ship uh playing a buttload of it um and yeah just ha having another blast with it uh doing some different stuff in different orders seeing how things change pretty interesting pretty yeah. fun yeah um so yeah i played a lot of that over the weekend having a, a grand old time with it and in the meantime, I want to read a uh, little super chat here. We got from Michael Cardenas, ten dollar super chat. It says Greg, can oh, we get shit. Paul Tassi on to guest on the show sometime? Would love to see him on KF to talk Starfield or his usual live service games beat. Also requesting Patrick Klebig to discuss crossplay. I would love to do a show with Pat. I yeah, tell you Patrick what, man, cool. both that, those both those guys are welcome anytime. Yes, that 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 weekend that we hung out with Klebig so much at. Summer Game Fest. I Stuff just felt up. like I'd known the dude my whole life. Yeah, yeah. Me like and Soulbike Mike. He just met Soulbike Mike, and Mike is just 
you know, buying eight bottles of water at a taco truck. Mike's just being Mike. Mike's yeah, just Mike's being Mike being Mike. in the morning on the streets you, of LA. You talking about what you uh, named your Starfield ship just reminded me that I named my mech in Armored Core 6 Metal Gios as like a combination uh, of Metal Gear. I like that. Gios. I like Two that. Two of my favorite mech things. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, Defective Sloth. 31 months of resubscription. Thank you, Defective Sloth. $5 super chat from Sean Spainer. This was an hour ago. It says, I'm going to try Starfield Game Pass. I've never liked a Bethesda game because they've always feel, they always feel bad at me because this would be the one I like. Sean Spainer, I'm riding, your, I'm riding your boots. Look at your boots. Look at my boots. They're the same boots. We've been in the same boots this whole time. I've, all, I've felt like that about a lot of different Bethesda games. And this one feels good? This one is just like hitting the right spot for me at the right time. You know, there's just maybe there's not enough games out right now. Maybe um, maybe there's a shortage of games, and that's why this one's kind of hidden especially nice. I Jay- wish that was the case. Oh, I man. wish you, the Starfield landed and there wasn't everything oh on top. I of it. Yeah. fucking wish. I would love to just play Starfield for yeah. Yeah. two weeks. Uh, Jace Drone, $10 Super Chat, says, I'm 35 hours deep, beat the Reusion quest, and early in the main quest and outpost building. I plan to spend hundreds of hours of this game and role play heavily. Is New Game Plus worth golden pathing and starting over? We talked about, I've talked about this at length uh, on Twitter. Uh, you can, there's a video up. I put it up on my TikTok too. Uh, the idea, if Jace, it sounds like you're doing great. Just don't worry about it. If you're role playing and you're enjoying the game and you're doing the thing, you're just doing great, keep honey. doing that. That's all you got to do. Just role play and do the damn thing. You'll be fine. Enjoy that. New Game Plus is awesome, but it works for my character on what I'm doing. But I am, I'm trying, I'm going to get back to where you are. And so there is this whole thing of you could just do what you're doing and then read about it eventually and see what it's up. Oh, here we go. This is a little tropical storm energy drink. Where'd you get this from? Um, I'll tell you what. The corner store. You're an audio listener. He has a can of rain. Corner store with a car wash that's like down. Oh, okay. Dude, that one has a good selection. A lot of people in chat were saying, Andy, try the C4 energy drink. I've never seen this before. Dude, C4, pretty damn good, Chad. You were right. Ah. I got like something berry, something lime. It was something, delicious. Something Dex say. It was delicious. Aiden, the average thing for six months of resubscription with Prime on Twitch. Wolf Fox, uh, one hour ago, 97 months. It's, it's my birthday. Happy birthday, oh, happy Wolf birthday. Fox. Happy birthday, Wolf Fox. Go play a bunch of video games. You, you deserve it today. It's your whole birthday month. Tell work you don't have to come in because we said so. Mm-hmm. And throw metal. Thank you for your five years of resupport. Five years have become the space core from Portal 2 Space. Jeter fan. 33 months. I just squeaked right there. <laughs> Raptor Cheers, 20 months of resubscription. Uh, thank you, everybody, for resubscribing. Saying hello, Scott Dotson, Dev. I see you down there. I see Scott. Uh, another Scott. super chat. Uh, super chat. Super chat. Super chat from, I wanted to say Scott. Scott. You have Damn. to use the end, Scott. Uh, CJ splits on with a $2 super chat. Says, should Metacritic scores factor in game of the year discussion? Absolutely not. If your what outlet is Metacritic. Silly. Yeah. If you're on Metacritic.com and you're discussing your game of the year, then yes. Yeah. Otherwise, no. James, or if you're the, Meta- the Metacritic. The factor should be the yeah. people reviewing the games and talking about it and building a list and having their arguments for why they think this is the game of the year or a five out of five or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. James Ocelot, tier one for 20 months of resubscription. Thank you, James Ocelot. Bro, you're, pretty, Ocelot. you're pretty good, kid. Rocket Guardian, two years or a two dollar super chat says nineteen inches in total, but sixteen are insertable. Wow! Jesus fucking Christ! It's still way too many. Wow! Yeah, yeah. Once you have like a you know, if you have an abundance of riches. Yeah, I was thinking the other day, Greg. Yeah, I'm sure you were. I was thinking like, uh huh. You know, if I was made president of the world, I would tax the the world. Mm. Put a suit around the world. I would tax the ultra rich. Yeah. Like crazy, sure right? You would. Billionaires wouldn't exist. Okay. And also, there should be a there there should be an attractive tax. Damn. If, I you're, like, uh, if you're born six foot three, oh, I like this. Much like I have, right? We're both six foot three. Sure. And I would pay more gladly. Uh, if you're if you're six foot three, gorgeous face, amazing jawline, mm-hmm. that's pretty privilege. All right. Yeah. You you pay a higher tax, right? Yeah. Gorgeous girl, you pay a higher tax. Massive shoulders. If you can just dunk a basketball, be in the NBA, you pay a massive tax. Okay. Pretty privileged, all right? Yeah, okay. Well, I think we'd I mean, all like, get taxed here. Sure, of course. For sure. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Skittle Monster. That's just it, huh? Okay. 
Well, just, you know, I, I thought you'd give me something. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 was, I was waiting for it to end and go somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know they never go anywhere. You should know that. I just typed it on Google, Ben Star height. <laughs> <laughs> ben Star is like 5'10", 5... Ten, five Oh, yeah, don't put that out there. Don't dox them like that. Well, that's good. What's, what's wrong with that? So what you're happens right. when you're 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 really handsome, really pretty, but you're not five or six three or whatever? Then you're fine. Doesn't like, matter. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. I, I like fine. this. I like because this. you put yourself on social media. You start making money from ads and advertisers. Yeah. It's like nobody can see your hate. Yeah. Attacks. Yeah. 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 You don't have to suffer. Sure. Right. Sure. You know what I mean? Skittle Monster, thank you for your three months of resupport. Says, any interest in Chance of Senar? Really cool looking puzzle game. That's. Getting Oberdin and Golden Idol comparisons in terms of quality. I've never heard of this. Me neither. Never heard of this. What was it called? Senar? Chance of Senar. Two N's, two A's. You ever see a word like that? That's not. Get to the bottom of this. $14 from Cozy Bear. Thank you, Cozy Bear. Hey, Cozy for Bear. $14 Super Chat. My goodness. Says, I beat Goodbye Volcano High last week and would give it a strong three out of five on the kind of funny scale. Oh, okay. An emotionally affecting story, a memorable cast, and a great original soundtrack held back by tech issues oh, and a oh. bugged trophy list. Well, ah! well, I mean, that's encouraging that the biggest problem with it are yeah. technical issues, yeah. right? I'm still going to try, try to jump in there. Still give it three, to jump three months. Fun fact, your chance of Sonar is Chance. C H A N T S. Oh, you thought Chance the Rapper? I thought like Chance the Rapper. Mm. Yeah, so I was like, I don't know. I don't, this game doesn't exist. But the art style of it looks incredible. Oh, is that Focus Home Interactive? Mm. 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 Like, look at this, though. Oh, really this pretty looks art really neat. style. Like, it almost reminds me of, like... It, it reminds me of that one game I can never rem remember. I think we might be thinking of the same game. The same sort of Breath of the Wild Explorer game, but there was no combat. You'd ride yep. the little motorcycle yes, in the desert. Yeah. That's the exact... I was going to say that with the combined lines. with, like, maybe Journey or something. With the lines. Chad, you know. With the lines, it was all like line art, uh, cell shaded sable. Sable, there you go. Yeah, fucking. Sable. It's like almost sable meets journey, but like more top down perspective. Hello, drove. Thank you for your five dollar super chat. Appreciate super you. chat. No message, just supporting. Kind of funny. Good enough, I'll take it. That's awesome, Hello, drove. Uh, the goob donated. What? What? What is this? I'll check for you. Yeah, can you look up the ISK currency? ISK. I think it's like I, uh, Irish. That well, is Iceland. Iceland. Oh, Iceland. I want to visit Iceland, Blue. Do you? I Guys, wanna... that's the Icelandic krona. Icelandic krono. That's krono. Cool. Krona. Krona. That's still cool. K-R-O-N-A, that's awesome. but the O's that's got awesome. a little hat on it. You know what? It's really like, you know, different countries... Uh, help me feel like I am living in the future with like different currencies. Yeah. Sure, for sure. You know what I mean? It's cool. I totally get that. And I support all y'all and all your different currencies. You know the Nigerian currency? No. Naira. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Pretty that's cool. Real cool. That's, yeah. cool. that's real cool. Yeah. What does uh, it look like? Is it coins or paper? Uh, it's paper. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it looks like dollars. Do they have coins? Different. Uh, oh, dude. No. I forget if they had coins. Because I remember like when I lived there, they were introducing, because like the lowest... Naira you can get was like five Naira, but they're introducing maybe like a one Naira thing. But I forget if they actually did that because I think that might have been a coin. But I'm but not positive. Let's kind of like your earrings. Are they new? Uh, they're like two months old. Oh, okay. Yeah. My bad. I appreciate it. I don't look at Blessing's earlobes a lot. You're right. I, I mean, I was used to seeing the like the studs. The, studs. You yeah. Like studs, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you never read the, the goob. goob. I never read the message. <laughs> Thank you, the goob, for supporting. And says, any chance of getting more Baldur's Gate streams? Love from Iceland. We want to so bad, just don't know when. Like we we want to get back to the fellowship. Um, Mike is already asking for me to completely delete my sixty-hour playthrough and restart Sounds with him. About right. Sounds about uh, right. And you know, not here's the thing. Cameron Kennedy was like, everybody in the world is struggling to play all these video games, and he's like, let me just restart Starfield yeah. <laughs> and give yeah, up yeah. forty hours of progress or whatever. Totally true. Um, I but do also shut up. We do want to get back to the Baldur's Gate streams. It's more about like finding the right time and the right days because every week is a every week is a winding road. I know if I can throw any fucking closer. top 40 hit of yeah, Greg, he's gonna it. know. Every, it, dude. I have a, I, what will always be seared in my brain about that is I Tell was me. at Shakespeare's Pizza. This is exciting. Post college, I think, because maybe it was during college. Me and my friend Coppus used to go there. They did slices. For, we would have, for uh, uh, lunch. We would do them. And I remember we were in the back room drinking our sodas out of our big Shakespeare's cups, having our delicious pieces of pizza. 
and the song was on, and he he confessed that for the longest time he thought when she goes uh, every day is a pain, uh, every 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 day is a painted sign uh, is one of the lyrics. He thought it was he thought it was every day is a pain in the side. Damn. <laughs> like I cannot not hear that song and not be taken back. I get it. That. Every day is a pain in the side. <laughs> I feel that. I Fucking feel that. living hell that Cheryl Crow's trapped. Uh, I got an update on the Nigerian Naira. Mm -hmm. So they have subunits called Kobo. Oh, so like, that's even cooler. Yeah, like yeah. Kobo coins. But like once you get to one and two Naira, the one Naira and two Naira are still coins. But it's not until you get to five Naira where they start doing fake notes. CJ Clarkson asks, is the KFFL returning this year? No guarantees. If it does, it will not be a full season, as that is a lot to commit to. Along with what you've been noticing on the stream channel, we're kind of committing more to, you know, actually sticking with our single-player games. Nick will get back to Mass Effect 2 and beat it. Nick Mike Scarpino is still playing return. Kingdom Hearts. We're still trying to, like, not just start games and then not finish them because it's just really tough to do so. What's up? Jay Shah in the chat says, Cheryl Crow might have an appendicitis. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, one word I wanted to read that has nothing to do with currency, but it's just something you hear in the news every once in a while. You got a new phone? Yeah. Nice. Nikkei, which oh. is the the Japanese yeah, like news game. site. No. Oh, wait. Man, what are You're you talking about a different thing? Well, oh. no, I, there is also a Nikkei. Whenever I hear the word Nikkei, I'm like, that sounds cool. That sounds awesome. Um, yeah, I got a new phone. I'm going to give this to my dad. Uh -huh. When I get when the new one comes out in a month, gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, my dad's rocking like an, uh, a much older phone. Chinaroonie. Thanks for 103 months, Chinaroonie. 103 months. It's wild seeing triple digits. Mister Hawks, 50 or five dollar super chat says blessing. Greg calling into the podcast was so much fun last week. I'll be putting guests on PS. I love you to my resume now. Put it in your Twitter bio. 100%. Or X-Bio. And if you didn't listen, PS I Love You was a call-in show last week, and it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. We were a bunch of goofs, so you should go check that out. We should do more of those. We should. I've been saying for a while, we cut Janet and just do call-in shows. I'm down. You, yeah. What you should do also is uh, to kind of like pre-vet these if you want to. One thing I like when, that podcasts do, sometimes they just will listen to reader messages. Yeah, voicemails. Yeah. yeah. I, I, oh, I, yeah. I enjoy stuff like that. Like, a lot of my sports shows do that. Like, the only couple of podcasts I listen to consistently do voicemail segments, and they're my favorite segments of the show. Jay Millie. But I feel like you got to do those. I feel like, I don't know if you could do those, like, live on Patreon. Well, maybe on Patreon. You got to vet them. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. It's all good. Uh, but I feel like you're running the same risk whenever you're having call-in shows. This is the yeah. thing, Greg. Some people, they try to be the side of the show. They're like, this is my chance. Uh, this is my chance to shine. Yeah. Let me get out there and really, and it's like, okay, relax. But sometimes it's funny though. Sometimes it is. Yeah. Usually I feel like it's like unintentional when it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, which is why I'm always like a little, you know, hesitant to whenever people ask like, do you ever play games of chat? It's like, I do. And then sometimes, you know, you get some dude on a mic who's just like, I'm going I'm to just throw it all. I'm going to throw everything at the wall right now. It's like, okay, thanks for playing. I'll, <laughs> I'll never forget. Like, Boop. Maybe one of the funniest podcast moments I've ever listened to in my life. It was a podcast I listened to called uh, Crash Dummies. And they do the voicemails thing. Or no, this is actually, it wasn't voicemails. This was, we'll have you call in live on the show. Um, but it's pre-recorded. And so, like, they just edit shit. Somebody calls in and, like, they're asking their question. And then, like, after they're done, they're like, all right, cool. We'll see you later. And the dude's like, actually, no, uh, don't hang up. Keep talking. Keep talking. And the dudes are like, man, what do you mean? What do you, and the dude's like, keep talking. Keep talking. And then, like, <laughs> they're like, what? And then they hear like on the line and they're like oh shit and they like they hang up dude dude was jerking off <laughs> like on the other line live on air and when i tell you it was the funniest shit <laughs> it was fucked up it was weird <laughs> but i was like this is fucking hilarious <laughs> it's a sponsorship uh nightmare right there jay millie thank you for your four months of support just says hey thanks for resubscribing with prime jay millie we got weapon x 313 with a 40 Six month resubscription says it's my three year wedding anniversary. Could you guys give a happy anniversary to my wife Andrea? What's uh, so just, just Andrea or just congratulations for being married? Hey Andrea, I heard it's your three year wedding anniversary to Weapon X. <laughs> he sounds cool. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. You know what Thank I mean? You. Thank you for you naming your first kid Logan, you fucking dorks. <laughs> Andrea, let me tell you right now, three oh, years, you're past the annulment section, but divorce is always an option, all right? Just think about it. 313, what area code is that? I know that area code, too. Everybody from the 313. Justin. Detroit? 
Wait, is it 313? <laughs> yeah, Detroit. Yeah, oh, there you go. All right, listen, Andrew, you're in Detroit, all right? You got lovely Ford Field to walk around. <laughs> go down there. Where did I get the wings at? Where did I get the wings at when I was in Detroit? Go there, get some wings. Have a good time and think about it. Andrea, do you want to be married? You're Mrs. X. They just call it Detroit Wild Wings. <laughs> 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 just in 34M. So, no, is this a cameo? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your 28 months of resubscription. Says, love you guys. Thank you, Justin. Love you too. Thank you for your 28 months. Hawk, RMB, 25 months. Jay Panic, 77 months of resubscription. Ryan Powala Higgins. Povala. Povala. $2 super chat. RPH. That's what I was calling. $2 super sure. chat. Forget Starfield. What is the best condiment? Ranch. Ooh. Yeah, I'd probably go ranch also. I feel like it's the most versatile in terms of where I'm going to put it. You know what I mean? Ketchup, stick with me. This is going to be one of those Greg takes that people get people mad about, but let me talk it out. Ketchup overrated. Ketchup is great. I, I just agree. feel like people put ketchup way too high up there. Mustard is going to be one of those things, like in a specific case, I want it. Not all the time. Ranch, I feel like, does really well in a lot of different do you, things. Do you count like buffalo sauce as a condiment? I do. If you, if you can dip, I think it's kind of... Mm -hmm. If you can drizzle on something, that's a kind Because okay, here's my Because ranch is technically a salad dressing, right? So it's like... Here, here's my thing. There's nothing I enjoy doing more than after a nice meal of Pluckers. <sighs> you have the leftover lemon pepper medium sauce. Oh, yeah. Dipping the... Getting it on the fries. Holy shit. Yeah. That is yeah. a next level experience. Yeah. And, like, I feel like that sauce could go on so many other things out there. Like, if they were, like, just, you get one, we get one dipping thing for the rest of your life, it would be lemon pepper medium from Pluckers for me. I like barbecue sauce. God damn it. Barbecue sauce. Yeah, yeah which one were you going? Sweet baby rice. No, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with the Mark Zuckerberg. Just basic? Answer. Yeah, I, okay. I, honestly, any barbecue sauce can do it. Yeah, okay. I've, been, I've, been on a, I've been on a, I mean, probably for years at this point, but a Rufus Teague kick. He does a lot of good mm. stuff. He's got the touch of heat one, a touch of honey. There's a Rufus. Bit. Rufus Teague. I got to tell my dad about that because my dad loves buying like hot sauces to put on the wings when sure. he barbecues. Um, thank you, God, Ryan. Pluckers. I miss Pluckers. Oh, so man, me too. It's times like these, I wish Roost Street hadn't closed down so we could still go back and eat a Pluckers. No, I think they're still doing so. Roost Street? Yeah, yeah. I think they're still around, yeah. Really? Still around, yeah. But they canceled RCX. No, I think that still happened. No, that still happened. It happened. Yeah. But we don't go anymore. Well, Greg and Joey went. I'm Greg. Mike and Joey. <laughs> Mike and Joey. Mike and Joey. Mike and Joey. <laughs> you are Greg. <laughs> That's wild. Loud you start. show a photo of me at Pluckers. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? Uh, uh, Shaky Spear, 34 months. Thank you, Shaky Spear, for being here for that long. Of course, he's Jose Cortez. Donated $2 super chats. Hey, Starfield slaps. Almost 40 hours in. Just vibing. Me too. Damn right. Jose Cortez. Mitch Crassin. 11 months of being... A kind of funny member on YouTube. You still got your razor here? Huh? You still got your, your clippers here? No. Lame. What do you want me to do? You want a haircut? I just caught, I, yeah, well, I just caught that. I got the neck hairs here. They're catching the... Oh, I would light. love to do I that. that. One shit. thing I really enjoyed doing when I shaved Barrett's head on the Next Gen Podcast, which you can watch if you're right a Patreon member, was uh, like the lining up in the back. Mm -hmm. Had a great time doing that. Because I'll tell you what, whenever... And this, this always started with uh, two of my favorite athletes of all time, Tony Parker and Tony Romo. Uh, Cow former Cowboys quarterback, former Spurs point guard, both Hall of Famers in my opinion. Tony Romo never really uh, always had a bad team. And blah, blah, blah. He's always amazing. Anyway, um, whenever they'd be interviewed, they'd have a lot of neck hair. Mm. And I would... You just want to get in there. I'd walk in there and be like, here's... Let me do this. I want to give you $5 e because your beard looks fine, but I just want to like line it up and take the rest off because it's just... I feel like it's mm -hmm. a power wash simulator sort of sure, effect. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's satisfying yeah it feels sad uh, anyway uh mitch crass thank you for your 11 months hello drove ten dollar super chat bring your clippers tomorrow maybe on the post show you can shave my neck okay too. Papa. like I, I i i never know first off i can't get a decent line to save my life okay because i'm doing it in the mirror i'm never happy and one time i was at the barbershop that was underneath the comics books or it was underneath our old office and the guy was like listen i don't do beards but i gotta help you and he's like he, he did he lined me up on this or whatever and so then i'm also never sure how high i could go like i'd love for you to you're doing tomorrow, it right yeah tomorrow doing. shave the back of my neck would love just to give me the line you'd like to see on would absolutely love because i'm not on the show because i'm watching little benny play soccer but then i could be here for that i'm gonna put it on here post show andy shaves greg Benny and you guys soccer. will still talk. Yeah, wait, but Benny's playing soccer like in like, a league in person. I mean, he's a toddler, so yeah. I mean, like, yeah, they do things in the. They league. got toddler soccer. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
whole. I got videos to show you. They also play with the parachute and stuff. It's like, a, there's a whole bunch. Because like 10 year olds don't know what the fuck they're doing. I can't imagine like. Oh yeah, there's no organization to it. How old ben, is this little fucker? Ben loves kids. He's about to be two. Two. Yeah, nice. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We're about T minus one month from his two. His birthday. Don't forget, <laughs> you're, you're all gorgeous. invited. You got you got the invites, right? Yeah, you got invites. I got invites. Oh shit, yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, was right. a while back. Yeah, we're getting ahead of it because we know we know how popular your schedule. When is this? Is. October eighth. Okay. I mean, they know when he was born. <laughs> this is my pinned tweet. It's is not like, <laughs> like it, what's his what's his skill level? I'm sorry. Oh man, this kid can kick. Hell yeah. I got moves. I got videos. I you you know I don't like to bog you guys. I've thought of making a Benny channel on Slack where I could just upload all the stuff. But you, I, when I occasionally upload a random, you guys don't say a fucking word. So I'm like, all right, clearly they're not connecting with the content. I love him. Okay, okay, okay. I will. I, I open him. I love him. Dude, uh, dude. I are you kidding me? Anytime like Jen posts a story or something, I'm always yeah. replying, "Que chulo, ay, cochites, yeah. ay, que chulo." And we think you're putting some kind of curse on him, so we just don't. <laughs> 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 we don't interact. We don't engage. <laughs> Just means how cute. Uh, Anthony James, thanks for a dollar fifty super chat. Uh, Hella drove with a ten dollar super chat. Says, "Hey, thank you, Anthony James." By the way, Hella drove. Hey, y'all. Message from St. Louis. Rip, hey, yes, Rip yeah. Volition just started Baldur's Gate three on PS5. I'm getting Starfield on PC. Sorry, Greg. Which do you all at this moment think will edge out as game of the year? I think Baldur's Gate three. No, but whatever. Nobody cares. Look at these two pros. Oh my right god! There. Okay, you kidding me? There? Easy to be. That's his best friend, Greta. They they do everything together. He look good yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, El Jovi, yeah, I think. Look at this little sport boy there, right? Look at him. He's in his tank top. Oh my he's god. He's ready to go. He's ready to start some shit. He's so cute. We're on our way, you know, because it's one kind of like juggle. Once, yeah. once you know he's of age, and and Uncle Mike can take him to intramural soccer and stuff, you know, we'll be in a different place. Um. Yeah, I'll probably say Gollum. Gollum. Yeah, there. that's a good. That's a good call. Sleeper hit. Brittany Simpson, eleven months of resubscription. Game Boy John, thirty-three months. Thank you, Game Boy John, for tier one love for thirty-three months. Slightly adored, thirty-nine. Says garlic or chipotle mayo is like something I could put on most things. I'm with you on garlic. I feel that. Lawrence, UK, eleven. A lot of eleven monthers. That's cool. A lot of people getting close to being here for a year. Lamont Johnson. I'm Lamont Johnson. Thank you for your ten dollars super chat. Says, why didn't you let me buy bless a 4K TV when he was suffering a 1080p? Love y'all. I don't think I know this context. You been, you know, how long have you been it, suffering a 1080p? Well, I, we have a 4K TV in our home. It's Michael's, but like I, even if I got another 4K TV, like we wouldn't really have space for it. And also, I, I, I like my 1080 monitor. What's your? Don't you have a TV in your room? I could have sworn I saw. It. Oh yeah, but that's that's a 1080 TV. Oh okay yeah. okay. And I guess I'm also like playing use now when I'm playing like Starfield or if I'm playing any PC thing, I'm playing on my ultra wide. Oh, I got prefer. you. Got you. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, man. I'm so happy that Blessing has this Razer laptop. Now, see, this, this is July, so he's gotten even better. I mean, watch, he drops in and then just goes on. But the pow, like he's got it. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? we said, oh, yeah. This is, again, July. Messy yeah, right been, there. Been There's been months yeah. of progress yeah. since then. He's over there. He's out yeah. there. Yeah. Aethrum, thank you for your, and, and also some of the best times for soccer. That's like where. Uh, toddler's growth like soccer skills get better is it really i didn't know yeah that. wow we really nailed that's this. like plants you know they grow in the in the sunshine true that's true sky forsland two dollars super chat says andy which sports podcast you listen to only the levitar show and also like all of their affiliated stuff mina kimes and featuring lenny love mina kimes featuring lenny football podcast and i miss katie nolan's podcast I saw her on TikTok recently, just doing somebody else's podcast. I was like, fuck, I miss listening to Katie Nolan's podcast. Secret, secret $10 Super Chat says, you might have mentioned earlier, but do you have a favorite bug you've encountered in Starfield? I've had an MP NPC starring, or staring wide-eyed over my romantic shoulder while saying our feelings for each other. <laughs> uh, with me, oh, I found out what happened to my NPC friend, by the way. Oh, the one that just disappeared? Because I think it happened, it happened again. Like it, with a different NPC or a different thing? NPC in a different game, and I think it's when. Uh, first off, the bu the bugs that I really hate that break the immersion are when you're like in an enemy. I'm doing that undercover mission, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm in a different ship completely, and then I'll hear my crewmates be like, "Landing right now, Captain." And it's like you're not on the ship with me. You're like. Mm. That, yeah, yeah. It, the game thinks you're on the ship with me, right? Gotcha. Uh, so th what happened to the NPC, I think, is like they take your ship away because you get arrested or whatever. Sure. And I think, and then you like go with the Crimson Fleet, and I think in somewhere in there, your NPC is like, 
well, I don't know what to do anymore, man. Like, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like I, I'm getting lost in the shuffle here of what ship to be on because you're flying different stuff for different crews. So I think your NPC just disappears. What's that your sucks, favorite bug, man? Uh, my favorite bug is one that I can't talk about, but I will talk about in the spoilery thing. But basically, I was forced into a choice. It wasn't the choice I wanted, and I tried to make the choice I, I tried to make the choice I wanted, but then the game bugged out and I couldn't complete that, so I had to go back and make the other choice, which then greatly influenced my playthrough. Mm. I don't think I have a favorite bug. There have I been times where like, yeah, I hated them all. There was one where like I grab jumped to a new system, and like the first thing I see is a ship just fucking like flying out of control because mm. <laughs> the physics are all wonky. <laughs> Shit like that, I think it's funny. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. There's been a lot of funny ones of just conversation starts and your characters, the person you're talking to is like running against the wall or whatever. Yeah. Uh, those make me laugh. Um, that's gonna be it for us here, everybody. Thank you so much for your your support through your super chats, through your resubscriptions, Twitch primes, all of that fun stuff. We appreciate y'all listening and stay tuned because Roger will be playing some Starfield over in the lab. We'll see y'all later, gamers. What is up, everybody? If you can hear me, I'm Roger here. Welcome to your Twitch afternoon stream. We're going to be playing some Starfield. Starfield week 